In this video we're going to talk about javadoc task. But before you understand this, you must first be aware of what javadoc is. Javadoc is a tool that is part of JDK and is going to help you create documentation for your Java files. If you're not aware of javadoc, here is a very simple example. I've picked this example from my Java programming course and I've explained beautifully about Java comments as well as javadoc tool. So what you would do is you would write comments in a specific format and once you do that we can now feed this file to the javadoc tool and the javadoc tool will now take care of generating the documentation. If you're not clear on the same, explore a little bit about this javadoc tool or you can enroll for my java programming course. Anyway, but here's the task for the same. You would provide the source path and list of files that you want to include. And we can also specify the destination directory where you want to generate the HTML files that has the documentation. And this is essentially the directory with the name docdir under the same directory. So let's see how it goes. So here are the two files. I have the Java file as well as the build.xml which you're seeing right now and is under the directory javadoc-task. Let's run this XML file. And soon you would notice that we have this directory created within which we have the documentation. Whatever the documentation comments we have put in in that Java file can be seen in here. If you open this index.html you would have the documentation. So here is what I have written in the file and it got reflected over here. We can also include the additional tags like you're seeing here. For example, in my case I've used doc title as well as bottom to put the copyright information. And actually you can see it reflected over here as well. If you go to the bottom, you would see that copyright information. Similarly, we got many such tags. You can refer to the documentation of this task Java doc and then you can explore more. I also quickly want to talk about logging. In our case, we are just having one single target, but in real time application, we could have 30 to 50 targets. In that case, it just won't suffice that we display all the messages in the console. For example, if the build fails, then it would be difficult to trace the error looking at all this text. And sometimes the text would be so much that the command line tool will not accommodate. So we have a functionality called record with which we can store all the log messages in a particular file. In our case, we are dumping all that data into build.log. And so if you go there, you'd be able to see this file. Let's open it. So you have all the log messages. Now what kind of messages will get shown up here is dependent on the log level. In order to understand log level, you need to have some understanding on logging mechanism in general. But just to give you an idea on what is logging, it would help you trace the problem in your code right from the command line or the logs that get generated. For example, we have this Java file. I'm going to introduce some sysout statements in here. Sysout and I'm going to say we entered addition method, something of that sort. Likewise, after we execute the logic in here, I'm going to put another sysout statement stating that we're exiting out of this method. If I do that, and when I run the program from the command line, if I get an error, it would be easier for me to trace where the error is coming from because I'll be able to see those messages that I'm specifying over here. For example, if there is some error within this logic, I would be able to know that it is in this method addition where the error is occurring something of that sort. Well, a simple file like this, maybe a sysout statement would suffice, but for larger projects, we might be needing a framework like log4j, which would offer a lot of flexibility and are specially meant for logging. Basically, you get more control than you would do with the sysout statement. For example, all these logging frameworks will support the following levels of logs. Whatever I've mentioned here, 
like putting a statement stating that you've entered the addition method, exiting out of the addition method. All that can be categorized as info logs. And for example, let's say that I'm wrapping this code around try catch block and there's some exception, then I can log a statement saying that it is an error or a warning, etc. And later when I use a tool like ant, I can specify the kind of logs that I want to view. For example, if I want to see info logs, I can tell the same. Or if you want to get more specific and see only error logs, I can tell the same. Basically, logging mechanism will save your time trying to find the error. And this attribute in here will help you specify the same. You can set any of these options depending on what kind of logs that you want to see. In our case, I set it to verbose, but you can also say debug. Save the file and let's run it again. And this time, oops, we have an error. It's not able to delete the following directory. That's because we have this file open. So let's close this file and then try to run again. Okay, now I got it. We have the file open in browser as well. Let's run it again. And this time it worked. So in our log file, we should have the debug logs this time. And you can see them here. By the way, we're also deleting the directory before performing Java doc to clean up things. Well, I don't have to mention that. Anyway, I think this is about it. See you soon.